<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, I call spirit of the forum. Let's give the candidates a chance to answer your questions. We are trying our best to give you and give them equal time, please. Just bear with us. You will balance out. You will balance out, believe me. Right now, I'll call on Dr. Mrs. Mary Ayon for a question. Dr. Mrs. Mary Ayon. Louder, please. Um, thank you very much. It's an opportunity to be present to ask this question. And I'm particularly going to direct this question to uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ako. And as well, I would like Dr. Uh, Major Ako to uh, uh, give um, his input on this as well. I'm standing here. I would vote for anybody as long as you promise me that you're going to make the health of my name That's right. the number one issue. You need to tell me what you're going to maintain the health of my my people. We talk about economic, economic development. Look around here, Obama is fighting for health. Why? The only way you can sustain health uh, economic development is when your people are healthy. Now, my question is this for both of you. Dr. Ako, You've been challenged on the internet and saying that you need to put your medicine where it needs to be. At this point, I want to ask this question. What is your health view for Manu community? And how do you tie that to the economic development of the Manu people here and abroad for both of you? I, I need to hear that question until I vote for you. Yeah. Thank you very much, the Doc. Well, the, I'm happy you mentioned that uh, I'm a healthcare professional and uh, I manage people too. Those people who have gone through medical schools and are conversant with the medical world, being a chief resident in any department in the teaching hospital is not chocolate. I was and uh, I volunteered my services to the full gospel medical center in Manfi without charging them one time for three months. Right now as we speak, when we went to Manfe to inaugurate the pharmacy, we mobilized the school of nursing. We gave them diagnostic kits. They randomly screened members of the public in Manu for diabetes and hypertension. Guess what? They were people who were already moving corpses. People ran blood sugar levels of more than 500 blood pressure levels of more than 200 and 120. We were lucky we had about six doctors standing. So as soon as they were screened, they just went to the next floor and the doctors made their substitutions and then ran the test. So I guess we are on the right path and I'm not taking this credit. It was with your money. And you have a pharmacy that we championed. That pharmacy is serving the Manu people right now. And then the Manu people, they told us, I mean you were there, that they need a laboratory because some of the medications we have there like for the treatment of uh, hyper uh, cholesterolemia, that's high cholesterol levels, they cannot prescribe because they don't have labs to run the test. That is why I am begging you to give me a second chance to raise money and we give them that diagnostic laboratory. Thank you. Thank you, and a reporter for the same question from, from the Major Fidelis camp. No, 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 so that we can ask them questions. We are addressing the question to the team. If, if the, 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 the person running for chairman wants to defer the question to his running mate, that's his prerogative. Major Agua has done that. 
and will have this patient to finish the Order, order, order. Manu! Manu! Okay. I'm losing my voice. I haven't slept for a while. But I'm honored to be here today to be part of this event and also stand for the cause of Manu. I will not belabor the point because it is not worthy. Our team is not standing here to point fingers as to who is better than who is worse. We know what it is. We call it by name. It has been a cycle. And we're still doing it here. And you see how hyper and dramatic your own leader stands here and does what he's good at doing. This is something that you need to do business with some of these people to know. Don't rely on the sweet talk. Ask pertinent questions as you're doing. To go back to what um, Auntie Mary Ayong just said here, the question is not to show how good you are a medical doctor or you're a medical student. The question, the key issue is health is pertinent to any community, society, whether Manu or America or wherever. Bottom line, there have been a lot of health fairs happening in Manu and Cameroon. But because we are Manu, we're going to talk specifically about Manu. Before Mecca USA and this current administration went to do the MPC, the pharmacy, there were health fairs going on in Cameroon. This administration will strengthen what the Agobison team has done and we will take it further based on what you people want. We will work with a team that is supported by Dr. John um, Mbu Robinson and Dr. Anna Rodem in doing the health screenings and providing medical laboratory stuff that they are already doing. So we will work with all those bodies to strengthen the health of our people in Mali. Thank you. Thank you. We will move now to the next question from Mr. Augustine Agbo. Mr. Augustin Agro, come forward, please. Please, let's try to make as questions as short and to the point as possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my question goes to uh, Mr. Bahako. Peter. I, I, I was very concerned about your petty arrogance uh, towards me. But nevertheless, I'm going to put my question straight to you. Uh, during the last two years, we invested a lot of money on the pharmacy project. There have been serious concerns and allegations that the pharmacy is not registered in the name of Mecca USA. If these allegations are true, how then can you ask us, ask us for two more years? And if they are false, are you ready to put the documents we've been asking you through the internet in front of this forum right now to prove that the pharmacy is our business? And one more thing, uh, also, we have great information that the pharmacy is closed right now. Can you look us in our eyes and tell us that's false? Thank you. Thank you, um, my dear brother. There is a difference between arrogance and charisma. And uh, I am clearly the head of my team. I take responsibility and I'm the head of that ticket. Anything that happens to my team and administration, hold me responsible, not my vice. The pharmacy in Manfe is running. It is open. It is under the name of Mega USA. Unfortunately, you came late. We had already talked about it. I made a presentation to those who are here and I'll not waste their time to go back there. All what I, I want to appeal you is go back and tell your friends to retrieve all those rumors that they have been spinning on the internet. It is counterproductive. Pick your phone, call Dr. Oben, pick your phone, call the mayor, pick your phone, call the senior division officer for Manfe, and you'll see that the pharmacy is wrong. The pharmacy is under the name of Mecca USA. It has no license. It is kind of affiliated with the Murphy Pharmacy, the Murphy Hospital Pharmacy. That was on recommendation by our politicians, the senior divisional officer, because the protocols to get a license is very tedious. 
Go back and ask your chief. He was at a teleconference when I made that report. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move to the next question. We'll call on Terry Ekotan to ask the next question. Terry Ekotan. <laughs> My name is Terry and I have a question for Mr. Abo, the Emilia Abo team. I think I have been reading a couple of stuff that you guys write for your campaign papers and stuff. One of the things I am so concerned about is the fact that the person who is actually running is not taking responsibility for what is written on his name. I want to ask you, Fidelis, on the fact that you're going to be the, ma the, the chairman of Mecca USA. How are you going to take responsibility for what your surrogates write about people when it's not true? Most of the items, or most of the writings in the internet, I, I do read them. Uh, some, I don't really have time to read them. But for those I read, there are some credence to it. Like my friend, uh, some of my friends, I don't want to call names right now. They write, when, you, when I don't respond, I, I normally don't respond in the internet. I call individuals and talk to them. But some of the items, or some of the writings uh, that I see on the internet, and that carry my name, or carry my endorsement, if that's what you're talking about. They are true. Now, if anybody has any, if you have any, um, uh, any concerns or anything concerning that, you call me and I review it. And if we agree or disagree, we talk about it and uh, it can be withdrawn. But I know that what is written and I say is right. Some of them is not right, but I will not go to the internet and, uh, and say it's not right. I'll call the individual and talk to them. That is uh, community relations. That is leadership, and that's what we want for our, for our society. Now, if my vice also wants to add something to it, I'll let her say. I'm sorry, but uh, we've exhausted the two minutes of that question, so we have to move on. If you want to revisit that particular question, you can use your subsequent time to answer it. I'll call now on Mrs. Ayoktako, Mary, Mary Ayoktako, for the next question. Mary Ayoktako, please move forward real quick. Thank you for giving me this honor to ask a question to the Ako Peters team. Mr. Dr. Seseko Ako Peter, for the two years that you've been in power, the controversial taking over, that you've not enforced any, any unity in this organization, and you still claim you want to run this organization. What have you put in place to reunify all the Manu people? And secondly, your administration, I thought after the lawsuit there was going to be a peaceful reunification, which your administration deliberately refused and even dehumanized other people and said they cannot sit on the same table to discuss any peace talks. How then are you going to reunify the Manu people? Tell us, don't make stories here. We are not interested in story speaking. Thank you very much, my sister. Uh, well, that is why we are running a democracy, because democracy gives everybody the don't to speech. Well, um, as far as uh, peace moves are concerned, we have elders in this room that I will refer to. I will refer to Sese Kuojongarok here. It is not a lie, Sese Kuo Joseph Mbu. Sese Kuo Ebidi Christmas, the chief of DC here, former chief of uh, DC, Pastor Ayamba Nkiri, Mr. Fim, Chief Fim, let them tell you 
whether I did not lead a delegation, put all of them together to go to our father's house, to Siku Ojomarok, and I begged them, almost knelt down, to put this community together. They promised to attend the inauguration, the inaugural, but they failed to attend. That I did. Secondly, when one of our sisters passed away, Sister Besson, I went there and we spoke, and as I told this audience here, I looked at everybody in the eyes and I said, look at this hall, so full of many people. They are all enjoying no quarrels. If this sister were given an opportunity to come back and look at it, see us hugging one another, she would be very happy. I called upon the same seniors in the community, recognized them as community elders, and then charged them with the responsibility of doing everything possible to unite our community. You know what happened? As soon as I left, they find me a cow. <laughs> I floated a task force for peace and unity. You saw it. Those are all the moves. And I'm still working. Last night, I worked with Ekpe to make sure that we have unity. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to the next question. I'll call on Mrs. I'll call on Mrs. Elsa Echu for the next question. Manu! Manu! Thank you so much. And thank you for giving me the pride of place to stand in front of uh, my my brothers and sisters and moms and dads to ask this question. We, indeed, all of us, can testify to this, that we have overstretched ourselves. We've put our hands deep down inside our pockets and donated money to do developmental issues for our cherished division. I want to ask, is this the only fundraising strategy that either you, Seseku Doctor, Chairman, Ako Peter, is going to use, or you, my darling brother, Major Fidelis Ako, is going to use to alleviate the financial burden that has been weighing so much on our shoulders. Thank you so very much. Okay, I think uh, she seems to address that question to both candidates, but in the interest of fairness, we'll start with uh, Major Fidelis, about since uh, Peter Alko just answered the last question. Okay, um, we know the USA is a country that thrives on its economy. As an association, we have the 501C that we need to resurrect and ensure that we utilize the 501C to raise money. Most of the five, uh, non, uh, most of the non-profit uh, associations of this country, they know how to use the 501C. We have the 501C, but we haven't made any efforts to utilize it. So in my administration, I will ensure, or my team will ensure that we utilize the 501C to its fullest capacity. By doing that, we should be able to raise money and do most of the projects that we are intending to do. At this time, I'm gonna let my vice also answer the question because we work as a team. Thank you so much, Major Fidel Sago. It is a team spirit that the Agwabini team brings to, to the table. A team that is going to respect every aspect of a team and will pick up one another when they're lagging. Now, the fundraising part of Mecca USC has been a problem not only with this administration. It has been something that has been ongoing. We've not been able to utilize our 501 seat free status to the fullest. So, that is something that we are going to come in with a frame of mind of going to the extremes to consult even professionals on how we can use this to advantage. But the key issue that you should be asking yourself is, 
This administration has been there for two years already. Why didn't they use it? What is it that they're going to do differently from now onwards? Thanks. I'm a reporter from Peter Aku. Thank you uh, very much. I'll start by telling this whole house in very unequivocal terms that we don't have the 501c documents. The person who is a resident agent of the 501c is Seseku Solomon Ebe. The documents are there. We don't have them. But it is true, we have decided here today that the Council of Chiefs is going to retrieve those paperwork. But that is not the only way we can raise funds. We have a very rich culture. We can make cultural exhibitions out here, a beret, a tambour, in Kim, and such other fine arts that we can display for the public to come in. We showcase it and we get a lot of money. We have identified some NGOs in this country as, and as I speak, as I speak, a grant application is in progress. And if we are fortunate, if we are fortunate, in the next uh, few months or so, we are going to see results. Okay, thank you. In the next few months, we are going to see the results because it is ongoing. And then secondly, we can organize social evenings at chapter levels. We look at a chapter with a very big number of people. We go there. The only problem that is killing us as an association is disunity. If we can only come together, count the number of people who are here. Let's organize something. Tell them, go and bring one or two friends. Thank you. Go and get one or two friends. Bring people from the community. There are people here who work with the county, with the cities. Bring them here. We are going to raise a lot of money. Besides, we have the convention, and there are people in our community that have the money. We can approach them to get it. 501C is just one of those aspects. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a word of question, ladies and gentlemen. Please, let's try and pay attention to what they are saying. I see a lot of people just concerned about the time and trying to hasten them up. That is my duty. Nobody else in this hall. That is my responsibility. So please pay attention to what they're saying. Let me worry about the time. Thank you very much. At this moment, I'll call on Mr. Agbo Hubert. Hubert Agbo. For the next question. Where is Mr. Hubert Agbo? Please come forward real quick. Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity. My question is for both candidates. When we formed Maker USA initially, we had unity in mind. And we took steps, uh, especially with the first administration, to make positive impact in the manual division by providing medical supplies, like beddings and uh, uh, appliances. Over the years, we have been playing politics, okay? Instead of getting down to the work of manual. We went that spirit that we had before, when we formed the Can USA. What steps do both of you have to bring us back to where we were so that we can actually move forward my division? When I look at other divisions who were formed or other cultural groups that were formed after Mecca USA, they have done a lot for their people. You guys tell me what you're gonna do differently from their predecessors so that we can move our uh, division to the right. Uh, step of oh, right direction. Thank you. Okay, the question is for both candidates. We'll start with Major Fidel Sabo. Um, we know that uh, Mega USA is fragmented at this time. And the fragmentation started after the, uh, uh, the last election. Now, what I will do is, I will ensure that I go from chapter to chapter, talk to the chapters, communicate with them, and ensure that they understand what we are doing. 
Because once you talk to the individuals or you talk to members, you gain that confidence. And if they want to donate, go donate uh, their money, their time, and everything to ensure that Mega USA succeeds as it was intended originally. We as a people, Mr. Hubert, uh, what was the other question, please? Say again. What, what steps do you have in place to ensure that the original plans we have for, uh, for my new division will be uh, carried forward instead of playing politics. Okay, like I just said, uh, communicating to the people, making sure that they understand what we're doing. Transparency. If the people do not understand what you're doing, they will not support you. You have to explain to them. Go to the various chapters. Try to put in place systems back home to help the people of Manu. Above all, care for our kids. Ensure that our kids emulate what we are doing here ourselves. Because if we, as individuals, leave the kids to themselves, there's no way that they would measure up to our expectations. So we should ensure that we do uh, maintain communication all around. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Peter Ako will answer the same question. Two minutes, Mr. Peter. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am very, very happy that all of us have identified the very fact that there is a lot of disunity amongst us. And the truth is that there is no one person or one uh, group or camp that has the magic one. It is our collective responsibility to put our heads together, forget about our own individual thinking and think about the bigger money.